guys in this video I'm going to make a um, dress for uh, my smart doll and I invite you to do it with me I'm not a professional seamstress I probably said it before but I try to make my pieces neat I'm self-taught uh, my grandmother tried to teach me but when I was a kid I despised um, sewing or anything to do with dolls at all. For this project I'm going to use uh, already made templates which are available on the Smart Doll website and I'm just going to adjust the t-shirt template. For some reason my printer didn't print the 100% scale but 95% uh, in, instead uh, and I use these particular templates for quite a few projects already um, in my previous videos I showed the dress and the t-shirt so I use this template obviously I gonna adjust it to what I need I don't want to invent the wheel again and create a template but it's already available like I said uh, for free at the smart door website just download and print it so this time I'm not gonna use a stretchy fabric or like jersey I'm gonna use a cotton and um, I love this uh, pattern and I'm going to use probably the same way like I did here so this is going to be the front so ice cream is going to be on the front and I'm going to just mix and match the other fabric this is for MSD size doll originally was made but I want similar dress for smart doll now it's quite cute in my opinion I've got various fabrics in here so if you're not familiar you can get nice small cuts not small but just enough for the dolls um, in the camera pack like that uh, from Aliexpress I think it's the best value for money in there because if you buy on eBay um, I, I didn't see very good cuts on eBay especially look at these colors and they're quite bright and I've had problems with these and so we're gonna mix and match things so there's gonna be like a walk in progress I would say so not necessarily gonna be showing how to do it I'm just gonna show how I do it which is not necessarily the right way but so this dress is gonna be with the lining because the lining allow me to hide a lot of things uh, especially when the cotton is not as thick or if it's not a jersey you're gonna fray um, the lining is the best to hide this uh, fraying part so if you're interested to see what I'm going to do you're more than welcome to watch it just to grab yourself a drink like I have here with my uh, milk or long tea chin chin um, and see where we um, what will gonna happen in the end because I have no clue <laughs> uh, what I actually want I know that I want this to be in front of the dress the rest it's gonna be a very creative process okay I start with adjusting the pattern so that's the smart doll here what I need to is kind of have an idea where the waist is gonna um, start though it depends on what you want to achieve but I want it to be a proper like dress and waist so we're probably looking at something here let me see again this is your waist here oh, you cheat yeah roughly in here though so that's okay if it's a bit higher that's not a problem so I think I already done some dresses which that's why you can see and I'm just gonna fold what I don't need in the back so it doesn't uh, bother me so that's gonna be the front that's the back the only thing like I said because it's a caution it's non stretch I will add probably another centimeter for the the seam allowance So that's one is done and I don't use the same fabric for the bag because I just 
like this produced in for the front so I need to find something which is going to be suitable to go on the back I think I will just take this one it's already pre-cut or some of them been cut out so that's for the back so the only thing is need to see where is the stretchy bit more stretchy so this is stretchy so that goes that way then because it can stretch that way slightly stretchy I usually iron the fabric before I do anything by the way I forgot to mention that um, but I think um, I will iron afterwards but I, well, I did iron this one but not this bit I need the lining now and uh, the lining should be the same material the same type for example if you use the poly cotton you'll need to use the poly cotton I'm going to use in the shearing one because it's a uh, cotton and I don't want it to fray even more but it doesn't matter what you're using so I'd cut them out and so this is the main part that's the front that's the back and that's going to be the lining so this dress is going to be without any sleeves I'm going to connect these two the same I'm going to do with uh, the lining I'm going to connect these two okay so I attach the two parts together so you just put uh, good side to good side and attach the shoulders so for both the lining and the main <clears throat> the front part I need to cut um, for the zip on the back you can be more precise than me but can't be bothered <laughs> I'm going to press the seams now so the seams are now pressed I just press them to one side what needs to be done now good side to good side with the lining so we need to attach the underarms together from both sides and this part all the way down you need to leave <coughs> the sides open don't close them because then they're gonna be attached afterwards you turn this piece um, from inside out so again this part and only up to there so I finished the stitching here and on the rampits and now there is a <laughs> two ways to turn it inside out there is a hook like that though I wouldn't advise using it because um, it's probably okay for the thick uh, fabric uh, but this is going to be damaged so I'm going to be using the straw and the skewer the skewer has to fit the straw you can use any like a end of the paint brush or something like that so what we need to do, we need to bring that back in here. I'm going to put the straw inside, in between, so it's here. Find the end. have more difficulty with the MSD size closing um, to turn it inside out and this becomes really handy for this one you just need to start and then it just go by itself so it's not a big deal so all this now need to be pressed all these corners here nicely in order to avoid um, things like that underneath it I'm gonna just snap very close to the seam make some cuts that's where the fabric been 
too tight. See? Gone. Once you press all the seams, we need to attach the sides. In order to do that, so I take the front and the back one. face to face and attach them so along this line to the very end. So once the seams connected you um, need to flatten them as well at the top ones so they're all nice and flat. So now the fun starts. We can put this aside for now and I took piece of fabric. Oh, that took about 90 centimeters or yard. I mean the length of the skirt is gonna, mine is 18 centimeters. The re reason for that is not as long is because I'm gonna attach the lace on the bottom. So I'm gonna attach more uh, things to it or I can either attach a fabric again, a different color, but I'm gonna attach the lace. I've got this ribbons, so this is just ordinary atlas ribbons and what I thinking of doing similar to what I've done before with MSG size dress so I've got this lace as well this lace um, I bought from Aliexpress I think and it's really cheap I think for I've got about like 10 meters of it for two pounds or something I'll, I'll link um, it below in the description but all my supplies pretty much come from Aliexpress <clears throat> Including this this fabric, all this fabric apart from the um, the bottom one because it's, I think it was uh, one of the UK stores. But anyway, so I'm gonna do so. I um, it's not like a zigzag stitch I use. I use different one, which is reminds me of the overlocker. So it's kind of locks the um, the fraying in. Uh, it's a bit wonky here, but I'll cut it. But that's how it locks which is similar to overlocker um, and so I'm gonna just put this on top and sew in all this on the bottom and then to cover the top of the ribbon I'm gonna use either the pink one to cover it with or the mint one because these two colors they match there's a mint around it and the pink is inside this one will go along this line and in order for me to do it straight and not end up with some wonky edge in the back I use a ruler so I take a ruler and for for example let's pretend we already attached that lace on the bottom I'm gonna use the width of this ruler and use the pencil and draw here and then it will be covered by the ribbon anyway and so it's all straight I attach the lace so I'm going to pleat the skirt and make sure the seeds fits in on the bottom here. So it's not much, but I'm going to make small pleats. Um, or potentially I can just run the stitch in here, the busting stitch, and pull it and tighten by itself like that. But I actually want the real kind of pleats. I'm going to pin them in place so they stay in at least until I uh, run the stitch through that once I finish the pleats. So I run the stitch over here on the top. So good side to good side. So that's the top. That's the bottom of the top. And I need to attach here. The skirt is attached here, so that's the lining. And it's attached to the front now, and need to fold the lining. Once it's folded, need to apply this back to the skirt to cover the the top of the draw edge of the skirt. Now I need to do the back. I decided to go with the zip. So I put it in. 
I didn't hide the zip, I just left it like this because I needed space. Uh, the width so the smart dog can fit the dress. It give me extra room. The t-shirt pattern um, is for stretchy fabric and although I did extra allowance it still was a bit tight on the back. So that's why the zipper probably is the best bet for this dress. So I got this example of the pleated skirt, the one I demonstrated in the video. And this is example of the gathered skirt, which is much quicker and easier. Uh, it does uh, give a different look. Uh, but they are pretty much exactly the same. Um, so, hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.